Uh, hello everyone. Today we are here to discuss about the Splunk development. So uh, basically there are two parts of Splunk. One is Splunk administrator and the other one is Splunk developer. So uh, the administrator part we normally does uh, the admin kind of activities like the user creations like uh, input and uh, uh, some kind of field like abstraction kind of things uh, and in Splunk developer we do uh, searches and we create reports we also create the large searches means complicated searches uh, which user cannot create they usually send us the queries that we want all these information so we write searches and we create reports uh, so these kind of activities we do in Splunk developer as a Splunk developer. So uh, let me go to the presentation. So our today's objective uh, is to provide the understanding of these things like uh, Splunk development concepts, Splunk developer rules, and then saving searches and scheduling the reports. So that uh, so our today's objective is to provide uh, Splunk development concepts uh, overview and then uh, the saving search let's go to the next slide uh, our first module is uh, basic concept of Splunk development here we will discuss the Splunk development concepts and the roles and responsibilities of a Splunk developer so let's uh, go to the next slide so these are the Splunk development concepts these are the basic concept of Splunk development, which uh, Splunk developer normally does. The first thing is uh, searches and reports. Uh, the uh, next thing is charts and dashboards. Next is alerts, and the next is creating the apps. So let me open the Splunk uh, web UI first, and then we will discuss it more. So when we open Splunk, we write uh, HTTP. then uh, localhost and port is 8000 which is the no, uh, default port of Splunk web UI when we open this particular web URL then we see the Splunk login screen here we give our credentials so let me go with the admin rights so our default uh, user is at all the capabilities in it and then we type the password of administrator when we click on sign in it goes to the home screen of Splunk so this is the home screen of Splunk where here is the search box which where you can type your searches and they are the here are the options like uh, if here are the settings which you can make so your settings menu and so this is the web, Splunk web UI so we discussed it in uh, as an administrator Splunk administrator training all the things so let's go to the uh, PPT now so the first uh, uh, concept of Splunk development is searches and reports so searches are basically kind of uh, queries which you user normally uh, which uh, user normally creates to search the data so we create searches so basically we when i say we then it's a splunk developer so we create searches on the basis of requirements given by different users these searches can be used in the form of reports later uh, these can also be used as a dashboards and alerts so basically the main concept of uh, Splunk development is searches there are a lot of uh, options available in Splunk to write the searches like we have in SQL or Oracle the SQL queries basically we write SQL queries in the database and but here uh, we write the searches 
So we call it SPL, Search Processing Language in Splunk. So all the things which we do in uh, database we can do here in Splunk as well. So the first concept is searches and reports. The second is charts and dashboards. This is basically uh, a graphical representation of the data which is stored in Splunk. So as we know we get uh, data from different sources in Splunk and uh, once we get data we use that data in the dashboards. So it is based on the user's requirement what kind of data he wants to view as a graphical format or in the form of charts. So they basically provide uh, information that what they exactly wants and a Splunk developer does all these all those uh, uh, changes which they want which they want. So the next thing is alerts. Alert is basically an action which triggers to notify the users a result set of the requirements or errors required by the users. So alerts uh, is basically uh, fires on the real time basis. Uh, user normally ask, ask a Splunk developer to create the alerts if uh, they feel that some error can come in their application and it can uh, down their system. So they want to immediately be informed uh, to a particular team that uh, alerts can come from uh, Splunk and they can go and cha change the settings in their application. Either means they can up the application accordingly. And uh, the next thing is, uh, the next concept is apps. Basically Splunk uh, app framework works from a specific uh, directory structure. We can create our own directory structure within the etc and apps directory. So let me go to uh, the Splunk web UI and then we will see all these concepts one by one. The overview of these concepts. So this is the Splunk home page. We logged in as an administrator. And there is a settings menu. This settings behavior which we want to change in S plan. These are the options available in the settings menu. The data inputs, the access control. Access control is basically used for creating the user center authentication. And data input is for the is for providing our data input in Splunk so that data can come from the different sources into Splunk. So we have a sample uh, file currently. So this is training file which uh, we currently have as a sample file. We will work on this training file and see how we can write the searches and how we can uh, use the other concepts of Splunk in the later part of the training. So today we will discuss the overview of all the concepts. So when we go to uh, when we discuss about the first first concepts, then it is searches and reports, which is uh, uh, which the searches you can write here on the home at the home screen uh, uh, text box. We can like write like index equal to whatever index you provide. So it, we can write it here and it can search the data in the blue. Let's go and create an index for our training file so that we will add the data inputs for that particular type and we will get the data into Splunk and then we will see how we can use searches and reports. When we click on indexes it will give an option to create an index. Let's click on the new button to create a new index. Let's give it a name like training underscore index. 
save it. And this training index will come in the indexes web page. We have created index for our training file. Now we will go and add the data input. When we go to data inputs, there are options which kind of data input you want to have currently the local file. So we can use files and directories to input our file into Splunk. Let's go to the new. It is giving an option whether you want to preview your data before indexing or you want to skip the preview. So let's go and skip the preview and continue. There are options whether you want to continuously index the data from a file or you want to upload an index file or there is an index of file once from this system server. So we want it continuously index whether the, whenever data comes into that file it will uh, index the data. So let's go for first option and then we will give the path of that particular file which we have. Here is the path C Splunk training. And then the name of the file. Click on the more settings checkbox where you can provide the index which we recently created. Let's go and change it to the local host. The host value. We want a cost a constant value of look uh, of host here. So that's why we choose only constant value. And then there is an option to set the source type. We will add a manual source type. Let's give the new source type as training underscore source. And then we will provide the index name which we recently created. So it was training underscore index. And then we go and save the data input. See here it is saying it is successfully saved and below you, you can see the new data input is created. It is showing the source type and the index name which we just provided and number of files is only one at the moment because we provided the file name. If we provide just the folder then it will show all the files from that folder and it will count the number of files inside that folder. Currently we have only one file so then only it will say just a file. created a data input let's go and see whether the data is now came into this plank or not see the file is uh, enabled by default we can also disable that file if we don't want to get data from that file in the real time let's go to the home screen again by clicking on Splunk Let's see if uh, the index is, the data is now available in that new index. In index name is training underscore index. Then we provide all time data.
currently it is saying no it means uh, it is not available let's go with the source type for that we need to change the ease of admin to search that particular index let's go to the rules in access control the access control we already discussed in the splunk admin we have the admin role available in the access controls we go and add that particular index let's go and provide all internal and non internal indexes as well as the training index then go to the go here as well and add training index and then save let's go again and see whether the index have the data in it currently there is no event count available in the index let's go and see what is there in the file see this data is uh, available in the file and we want all this data into splunk as well this is how we created the data input and indexes and once the data will be available in training and so index then we can go and search the data using the home screen let's go and see what is there in the logs we go to the C program files, Splunk, and then where log Splunk and Splunk B. This is the default log file, so all the error comes into the Splunk dot log. Let's go and change the file name. Change the file name was Splunk D at the that time. That's why it is saying that file name is different. We will change the file name and then we will change the file name in our data inputs as well. So that was the reason why it was not because I changed the file from Splunk D dot log to the training file. So that's why it is saying that the last time uh, the file name was different. So this kind of issues which we can face whenever we add a data input into Splunk. So let me go and to the files and directories again and we can clone our input rather than changing the existing file. Clone means it will create the same copy of existing data input into Splunk. We'll go and skip the preview and then continue. We don't need to provide information again and again when we use clone. See all the all the values which we set we added here in the which we added here it is coming by default because we use the clone option. Let me give the file name again here. the original file name and then save it
So we save the new input and we will delete the existing one because it is no longer required. Let's go to the indexes now. It is still not indexed, so it will take time to index. You just added the input. So this kind of uh, these are the steps which can we can perform to add a data input. And once the data input is set, we can go and search the data. So our first concept was uh, uh, searches and reports. And uh, let's go and use the existing index which is already there in these plans like index. equal to underscore audit. So here is the data which is retrieved from the audit index. We can take the reference of this particular and discuss the concepts. So this is how we can write the searches. They are complex searches. They are options to uh, group by or uh, get some filters over it, which we can discuss in the later part of the training. And when we talk about the reports, then we can uh, go and go to the searches and reports option. And then we can add a report based on this search. So this is the first concept. The next one is uh, charts and dashboards. So we normally add the searches into the searches and reports option here. Let's go here. And uh, we can create the dashboards based on the searches saved already. So when we go to Splunk homepage, we can see there is a dashboard option available when we write a search. So here you can you, uh, see that dash, dashboard option. When we click on the dashboard, you will see the existing created dashboards on this web page. Currently there is no dashboard, so it is not showing anything. We will discuss it in detail uh, later. So here are the uh, concepts we have like search, reports, alerts, dashboards, and pivot. So, and also we have an uh, um, an apps creation rule in this plug. So when we go to manage apps, we can go and create a new app inside it. There is a option available like create app when we click on this button it will give, give us the option to create our specific app so we usually create apps if we want uh, our system means if we have multiple uh, forwarders or multiple search heads so we usually create our own app with a set of configurations and we deploy the app to the forwarders and the search heads or indexers for the processing. If they want if we want all the 
Splunk servers use the same configuration. So this is also a, a Splunk development concept apps which uh, Splunk develop normally works on. And alerts we have discussed that we have alerts. There is an option in settings, searches, reports, and alerts. So all the searches, reports, and alerts all go and save into this. We can also create uh, searches, reports, and alerts using uh, the new option available on this page, like new. So we will discuss it in detail. So basically, these are the basic concept of Splunk development. So we discussed uh, the searches, reports, charts and dashboards, alerts and apps. Charts are also a kind of dashboards which we create if we want the data in a form of uh, charts rather than the graphical, then we use charts which we can discuss later. So this is a, a simple overview today that what are the concepts of Splunk development. Let's go to the next slide and uh, the next uh, thing which we have to discuss is roles and responsibilities of a Splunk developer. So a Splunk developer basically does is uh, sorry uh, it uh, Splunk developer is basically responsible for all these things like the searches, reports, dashboards, charts, alerts, and apps. A Splunk developer creates the searches, and based on those searches, they create reports. They create dashboards, they create charts, they create alerts, and also they create the apps required by the different users. So now we uh, we can think that what are the difference between Splunk administrator and Splunk developer? The Splunk administrator only does the admin kind of activities like uh, they do the user creation, they add the inputs, they add uh, uh, the field extractions, all these kind of things they can do. And Splunk developer normally works as a developer in Splunk. So like searches, searches is a very, is a main part of uh, Splunk. So we write the complex searches and then we create the dashboards on those searches. So this is all for today. Thank you everyone for your time.